Hello everyone, I'm Paul Everett, Python and Web Developer Advocate at JetBrains. I'm doing the narration audio for this video by Mukul Montosh. Today, we're going to have a demo session of the Kubernetes plugin provided by JetBrains. For this demo, we're going to use the PyCharm 2022.1 release. Make sure before moving ahead that you have Docker Desktop or Minikube already set up on your machine. Let's first install the Kubernetes plugin. Go to File, Settings. Click on Plugins and search for Kubernetes. As you can see, I've already installed the plugin on my machine. Coming back to our project root, you can see that this is a fast API starter template, which was created by PyCharm. I've already created a basic Docker file for this project, and the respective image is already hosted in Docker Hub. Let me show you what's there in the Docker file. We're going to use the Python 3.10 version, and along the way, we will perform common stuff like creating directories, setting up environment variables, installing dependencies, and finally, we're gonna run the application through GUnicorn on port 5000. Now, let's quickly jump to creating the Kubernetes manifests file and show you the power of the Kates plugin. I'm going to first create a directory called Kates, K A D S. I will create a pod.yml YAML file. First, I will show how to create a basic pod through the Kubernetes plugin. But before that, open up the services tool window where we will be monitoring our Kubernetes resources. Click on view, tool windows, services. The shortcut for Windows and Mac is Alt-8. In the services window, you can see that it's showing the Docker desktop, which is installed on my machine. It has been auto-detected. I'll come back in a while and explain more, but let's now move back to creating our basic pod. As you know, we have already installed the plugin. You just need to press the button K. As soon as I press the button, you can observe that we are getting a list of predefined templates for pod, service, deployment, config map, and generic resource. The good part is that you can even customize and create more templates based on your requirements. I'm going to choose kpod and press enter. How easy that was, we don't need to spend time on writing and we'll be creating an Nginx pod. I'm going to select an Nginx image. As you can see, it provides a lot of options of Nginx versions available on Docker Hub. I will choose the 1.21.6 version. Next, I'm going to click on this green icon, which is going to apply the changes. You can see the pod got successfully created. To know more about this pod, I will expand workloads and click on pods. Now you can see we're running an Nginx pod in our Docker desktop. I will do a right click on the name of the pod and it's going to show a list of items. We can describe the resource, follow or download logs, run a shell, open a console, and we even can do port forwarding. That's really amazing. Now, let me first see what's coming up in Describe Resource. Describe is basically going to fetch some detailed information about our pod. It's also helpful for debugging when the pod is in a pending state. You can observe the events, the Nginx image getting pulled, and then after creating and starting of the container. Now let's move back to services and try to forward ports. I will forward the port 80. Let me check on the browser. Great, the Nginx default homepage is appearing. That means our pod is running fine. I will close the tab. 
I can even follow the log and download the log as well. Now let's delete the Nginx pod. Our Nginx pod is successfully deleted. Now we will focus on deploying our fast API project in Kates. We're first going to create a namespace. We won't be using the namespace, just going to illustrate the Kubernetes generic resource. I will set the namespace to fast API demo and set the labels. I next click on three green arrows and our namespace was successfully created. Next, I will create a deployment. Deployments can scale the number of replica pods, enable rollout of updated code in a controlled manner, or roll back to an earlier deployment version if necessary. The deployment template was generated. Let me provide the metadata and image information. I will be running two replicas of FastAPI. I will provide the image name, which I have already published to Docker Hub. The container port is going to be 5000. As you can see after hovering over here, I'm getting a small help information, which explains exactly what is the image pull policy. It also shows the possible values that are accepted. This is really good providing bite-sized information. Now let's move and create the deployment. Our deployment is now created. Now we will create the Kubernetes service, which is going to provide a unique IP address. This address is tied to the lifespan of the service and will not change while the service is alive. Similarly, I press K and select the service. I will provide metadata information as fastapi-demo. The selector is going to be fastapi deployment. Port and target port will be set to 5000. Node port will be set to 30010. A node port exposes a service on a static port of the node IP address. Now we will create our service. Our service is now created. Let me refresh you can observe the running pods. There is one deployment under which two FastAPI pods are running. There are lots of things you can check like stateful sets, daemon sets, or even if you're running periodic jobs like cron jobs. Under network, you can check services and ingress. Ingress exposes HTTP and HTTPS routes from outside the cluster to services within the cluster. For our demo, we are just a plain node port service, which has been exposed on port 30010. Let me check on the browser. As you can see, the fast API docs has been loaded up. Let me check what's coming up in the log. This looks good. I will also try to get inside the container by clicking on run shell. I can also check what's there in the requirements.txt and also run the Python console. Coming back to the services window, you can see we can even check the underlying storage volumes, basically the persistent volume, volume claims and storage classes like AWS Elastic Block Store, Azure Disk, or GCE Persistent Disk for Google Cloud. Custom resources are extensions of the Kubernetes API. CRD allows you to define custom resources. We can also check the events, what was happening in the background, scheduling, created, killed, scaling replica set, etc. All the events are being captured. It is really great that the Kubernetes plugin is doing all the heavy lifting instead of us typing the command manually on the terminal. This plugin is not only helpful for local development, it helps us to connect with external Kubernetes clusters, which may be running on premise or in the cloud. I will right click on Docker desktop and go to more, but 
One thing I forgot to mention, we can easily switch the namespace from here. Currently it's pointing to the default namespace, but we have a list of options. So it becomes very easy to switch. Coming back, right click on Docker Desktop, go to More, and click on Show Settings. You can see the Kubernetes Settings window. You can observe under Tool Locations the path to kubectl executable and Helm executable. This also helps you in writing Helm charts. There are lots of things you can do over here like defining the namespace, and mentioning where to download the pod logs and defining the command to run for the shell inside the container. Coming to the configuration, you can observe the path is now pointing to the config of our Docker desktop. So I'm going to change this and provide the config file of our EKS cluster. EKS stands for Elastic Kubernetes Service a managed Kubernetes service offered by AWS. I will choose the My Demo Cluster config file. Let me show you on the EKS dashboard, the name of the cluster is My Demo Cluster, which is running Kubernetes version 1.21. Under Pods, you can observe that there are 15 Nginx pods currently running. Let's see how we can access this Nginx publicly. I'll go to Services, and you can see there is an Nginx service running. Let me try to get some more information. I'll do a right click on the Nginx service and click on Describe Resource. You can see on line number 11, it exposes the Elastic Load Balancer endpoint, and it's running on port 80. I will copy the URL and check in the browser. And you can see we got the Nginx homepage. This was a really great experience working with the Kubernetes plugin.